Okay, hello everyone, um, and welcome to Facebook Live. I'm Jesse Meckling, the Director of Education at the Center for Coastal Studies in Provincetown, um, and this is our 11 o'clock Facebook Live series, Cool Marine Animals That I've Seen. Uh, this week's theme is just one look, meaning uh, animals that I've only seen one time very briefly. Uh, and the animal or group of animals that I'll be talking about today, I saw um, just one time on a dive in Indonesia on one dive. Um, and at the time, uh, this was back in 2012, I didn't even know this uh, species or this animal existed. Um, I had never heard of it. Um, and um, which is not too surprising since um, six of the eight species of um, now known species of this type of animal has only been have only been discovered since 2006. So it's a, um, a really small animal. It's an animal that's similar to other animals um, that um, you may know, seahorses. But it's a unique, unique kind of um, seahorse. Uh, it's very cool and relatively new to science. Uh, in fact, the newest species was just discovered in 2018 or just um, written up in 2018. Um, and that species or type of animal that I'll be talking about today uh, is called the pygmy seahorse. So let's bring down the presentation. Um, so pygmy seahorse, they are fish. Um, they are, there are eight known species. Uh, it was first discovered in 1970. Um, by a marine biologist who was studying Gorgonian sea fans, uh, which are similar to soft corals. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, six of the eight species discovered have been discovered after 2000. Um, in fact, and many of them have been discovered after 2006. Uh, they're related to seahorses and pipefish, uh, but they are very, very small. Uh, in fact, the researcher who found them uh, in New Caledonia um, had the Gorgonian sea fan on a dissecting table when two small heads popped out um, and he saw the first known uh, pygmy seahorses. Uh, they're quite uh, amazing. Uh, they are found in coastal areas of the Indo-Pacific um, region, mostly in the Coral Triangle, which you see here. Um, the Coral Triangle is an area of um, marine importance covering the waters of Indonesia, Philippines, Timor Est, Malaysia, Papua New Guinea, and the Solomon Islands. Um, they're also found in um, off the coast of Australia and New Caledonia, which are outside of the Coral Triangle. And the most recently discovered species was uh, about found 180 miles or about 300 kilometers off the coast of Japan, um, which was discovered in in 2018. They're found on reefs and slopes at a depth of roughly 10 to 40 meters, 33 to 131 feet. Um, but one was photographed um, off, um, I believe it was the coast of Australia at a depth of 100 meters or 330 feet. So if you've never seen a pygmy seahorse or heard of one, um, they are small. Um, they are quite amazing. Um, the first species the discovered, which is this species here, um, called the bar bargibant pygmy seahorse, uh, was discovered livingly, living uh, exclusively on fan corals. Um, they actually match the color and the appearance of the coral. So the same species will look different on different color corals, um, these Gorgonian fans. Um, they are small and masters of camouflage. Uh, they actually use adaptive camouflage. So they, as I mentioned, they will change their color um, to match the surrounding um, sea fans or, or coral or, or seagrass that they live on. Um, these animals live their entire lives on um, these sea fans. So they, they, as an adult, they will live this in, their entire life on a sea fan. Um, in fact, they have the smallest range of any fish, um, not mentioning much further than um, the area the size of a dinner plate for all their activities. Uh, they are small. Um, they're uh, between 13 and 27 millimeters. That's half an inch and uh, one to 1.06 inches long from the tip of the tail to the end of the snout, uh, which is about the size of a jelly bean. Uh, other distinctive uh, pygmy seahorse characteristics include a fleshy head uh, and body, a very short snout, 
and a long prehensile tail. As you can see here, this, this is the newly discovered uh, Japan, Japanese uh, pygmy seahorse. Um, true pygmy seahorses have special two special adaptations, uh, which differ them from um, other species known as dwarf seahorses. And that is, uh, they have one gill opening rather than two, and they have a brood pouch located within the body uh, of the male uh, instead of the tail as other seahorses do. The heads of some pygmy seahorses can represent 25% of their total body length, and they do not possess eyelashes, making them very sensible to light. Um, here, it's, it's really hard to see this one. It's in there somewhere. Um, seahorses are usually found in pairs or clusters uh, with up to 28 um, on a single, recorded on a single Gogorian sea fan. Um, they're thought that they may be monogamous. Pairs form partnerships called pair bonds, which they tend to reinforce um, through daily greetings, where they might entwine their tails and twirl or shake and sway next to each other um, while brightening in color. Males and females are distinguished by openings at the bottom of their trunk. Uh, females have a tiny raised um, pore for extruding eggs, and the males have a, a fore and aft slit for accepting them. Like all other seahorses, uh, they're ovoviviparous. I mean, they give birth to live young after um, hatching the eggs. Um, but it's the males, like in many seahorses, that brood the eggs in a pouch for about two weeks. Um, uh, researchers in Indonesia witnessed a male giving birth to 34 young, um, basically um, miniature adults. Um, <clears throat> And because of because of their size, their diminutive size, um, they have this. The males have this pouch inside of their body cavity, not on their tails. Um, it's one of the one of the differences. The newborns are measured at um, two millimeters or 0.07 inches, and they're as I mentioned, basically miniature versions of their parents. Um, and the young are released um, from the male's pouch and swept away by the currents into the ocean. They live, they have a planktonic phase, so they, they're floating around the ocean for a couple weeks um, before they uh, settle onto a reef. Um, and uh, when they settle on the reef, they will actually change uh, their color to suit um, their surroundings uh, with that adaptive camouflage. Um, despite their relative cuteness, um, much like ladybugs, I suppose, um, Pygmy seahorses are vicious stealth predators. Uh, they prey on zooplankton, uh, specifically a type of crustacean uh, known as a copepod, which is one of the main food sources of our North Atlantic right whale here in Massachusetts. And copepods are extremely hard to catch. Um, they are very, very fast animals for their size. Um, they can move at a speed of 500 body lengths per second, uh, making them one of the fastest animals for their size on Earth. Um, and pygmy seahorses, believe it or not, sneak up on their prey, getting to within a millimeter uh, before striking, uh, giving the copepod no time to ex escape. So this would be a wonderful BBC documentary uh, in miniature of miniature seahorses capturing uh, tiny zooplankton. I'd like to um, see that um, series when it comes out, the, the miniature underwater world, it would be called. So very little is known about the total number of pygmy seahorses, population trends, or distribution worldwide. Um, they're still discovering new species, and, and, and they may still be discovering new species in the future. Uh, threats to these new amazing little creatures are similar to most species that live among corals, including land-based pollution, which causes coral degradation, habitat loss due to fishing, um, and ocean acidification and rising ocean temperatures due to climate change. Um, Many species suffer from habitat loss due to uh, indiscriminate fishing practices like dynamite fishing um, and gill netting. Um, and there is a potential for an aquarium trade with these animals. They do not live very long in captivity um, and not much is known whether they're being taken out for, for um, the aquarium trade, but it is another, um, another potential threat to them. Um, not sure if you can see where this one is in this slide. Uh, it's on the left-hand side. The, the head is actually pointing uh, down towards the bottom of the slide. They're, they're, they're really amazing. Um, you, it's hard to believe when you see one that is actually a living thing. Um, 
as I mentioned, I saw one just one time, and I'll uh, I think I'll show that picture here. Um, um, and I add the arrow in so that you can see where it is. Um, this is the one that I saw. It was it measured um, probably about um, 20, 25 millimeters or roughly an inch. Um, and they're they're amazing animals. I now want to see baby um, pygmy seahorses, just like the baby mantas and whale sharks. That'd be great, all in one dive. Pretty exciting. Um, but I just like to see more. They're um, truly amazing and definitely deserve more than just one look. So that's about all for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed learning about uh, these amazing little animals. Um, and um, I hope you come back and join me tomorrow for another uh, cool marine animal I've seen with just one look. Um, and that is all for today. So stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, thank you for joining me and uh, hope you'll join me again tomorrow. Thanks and have a good day. Bye-bye.